what better reason to get a bath than mom won't be able to do it for a little bit, right? Hello, beautiful humans. Thank you so much for being here for another video. If you are new to the channel, my name is Bailey M. Bain. I am a spiritual entrepreneur as well as a yoga and meditation teacher. And I am so grateful that you are here today. Um, I am, I, I've gone through a lot of things with my health and I am currently on my next step of my health journey with being diagnosed with endometriosis. So today is the day before my surgery. I'm having a laparoscopy and a DNC done to diagnose and remove endometriosis tomorrow. So I wanted to come on and make this video um, in case you're in a similar situation or somebody you know. And uh, I wanted to just take you along my preparation for today. Not so much take you along, but I wanted to kind of just walk you through what I'm doing to prepare for my surgery for tomorrow. So a lot of it is like just mostly cleaning and maintenance stuff, but uh, I thought that this might be helpful just in case you are looking for something, pointers, tips, anything like that. Before I get started, I'm in our bedroom and you can kind of see like our weird sleeping arrangements. So Cody and I both sleep sitting up. I've been actually preparing to sleep sitting up for the surgery so that my stomach isn't like doing anything weird um, with the incisions, but it also helps me when I'm like dealing with nausea and that's been a huge symptom, kind of what started this whole path to being diagnosed with endometriosis. So when I'm experiencing nausea, it's really helpful for me to sit up when I am sleeping. But uh, my fiance, Cody, he has stomach issues himself. And so he's been uh, sleeping, sitting up for so many years like i can't even tell you how many years he's been sleeping sitting up so longer than i've even known him <laughs> but today i have been preparing for the surgery tomorrow but like i said it's mostly been um like things around the house to do so i wanted to make sure that my house was clean because i know that i'm not gonna feel up to like going around and, and dusting and I won't be able to like lift a vacuum or anything crazy like that. So I actually, we have a, one of those, like, it's not an actual like name brand Roomba, but we bought a uh, off brand Zumba, Zumba, Roomba, the automatic vacuum thing. And so I have a feeling that that's going to be super helpful when I am recovering. So I can just automatically run that little vacuum with the button on the remote and I don't have to worry about doing the cleaning. So uh, I, I made sure that the house was super clean today. I washed the sheets and all the pillowcases. So I know that I always sleep really good on clean sheets. I feel like most people do. So I wanted to have nice clean sheets for tomorrow when I get home. If you have pets, like I have three dogs, so I gave them a bath today and that way, you know, they needed a bath anyways. And I know that I'm not going to be able to do that like next weekend. And that way they're just a little more docile. They tend to sleep a lot more when they're clean. And so I did that today as well. I got all the laundry done. I started to kind of map out everything that is going to need to get done this week. And, um, that way my fiance has that he knows exactly what needs to be done and then i don't forget because let's face it i don't know how i'm gonna be feeling after all of that so there is that if you are working of course get all of your work done don't forget to set your email for your away um and then of course pack your hospital bag and i'm actually going to make another video and take you along and show you what i'm bringing with me in my hospital bag it's not too much because it's outpatients but i wanted to just make sure that i'm prepared packed up and ready to go i know i've i've heard from some other people and read up and watched some other videos on different things to bring with you. So I am going to show you what I am bringing with me. Um, and then you are most likely going to get a phone call the day before. I got mine earlier today and they're going to give you all of the pre-op instructions that you need as far as like don't eat or drink anything uh, after midnight the day before. They're going to tell you what time you're scheduled for surgery. Um, and then they'll tell you if you need to come in beforehand for blood work or uh, any kind of testing beforehand. So for me, they're doing all of mine at the hospital in the morning and I have to be there at 1030 in the morning. And I think that they're not really doing the blood work beforehand right now because I feel like they're trying to minimize as many people in the hospitals as possible, which is totally understandable right now. I know that, you know, I'm in Michigan here and we are like the epicenter for this pandemic right now. And so, 
honestly, I'm surprised that they're still even doing outpatient procedures right now, but uh, because of that, like, my fiance will not be allowed. There are no hospital visitors right now, even for people who are like, having chemotherapy done right now. It's, I feel like the only patients that are allowed visitors right now are uh, moms in labor and that's about it. <laughs> I, I could be wrong, don't, don't quote me on that, but um, that's just something to prepare for. So as far as like my fiance goes, he will be dropping me off at the surgical doors and then picking me up at the surgical doors. Um, I kind of like, made sure he's got food to eat for tomorrow and i know he's gonna be nervous just waiting for me so um we kind of mapped out a game plan like <laughs> if uh he takes the dogs on a w-a-l-k then it might help his nerves and help the girls be a little less crazy and wanting to run around so that's what i've been doing today um i'm trying to think if there's anything else that you might need to do to prepare for your surgery they actually called me last week and so my my surgery's on 420 and 420 blazer right no um so my surgery's on 420 and when they called me to kind of walk through all the stuff i needed i just very transparent about uh my cannabis use in medical situations so you always and here's just a reminder for you you should always disclose to your anesthesiologist if you consume cannabis how much and how frequent like when the last time you consumed it was and um how much you consume it because it affects how much dosage you need of anesthesia um to keep you asleep so I've read that if you don't disclose that, then you have a higher risk of like waking up and, and like pulling tubes out of your throat and all that good stuff. And I'm just, I'm not about that. So I'm gonna be fully transparent about all of that good stuff. So they told me to stop consuming cannabis completely three days before the surgery, but I've read that as long as you don't do it like the day of your surgery and you disclose it to your anesthesiologist, you should be totally fine. Um, I've definitely cut back a whole lot um but just something about me i we're in a recreational state now and i've been a medical consumer for many years <laughs> so to just not consume like that it's it's part of my life it, it helps me eat it helps me like function and, and get through certain things so just cutting that out completely isn't entirely an option for me uh and i know that it's the same for some other people as well so just bearing that in mind uh that's just what i was i've been told what i've learned and uh, my experience with this so i'm really excited i'm super excited to just have answers and to get to the next step in my healing journey i thank you for being here thank you for watching and i will see you next video bye thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe to show your support I'll be back next week with more videos. I love you guys.